On the 7 tonight, the man representing rank and file police officers tells us he would like to see Scottish police given the powers to strike in the future. The family of one of Scotland's greatest ever rally drivers, Colin McRae, who died in a helicopter crash 15 years ago, are racing again to celebrate his life. Plus all of the latest sport and entertainment, join us on the BBC Scotland channel at 7. In the meantime, we're going... Tonight, a senior Conservative MP has been suspended after an alleged drunken sexual assault. And later in the programme, we'll hear about the family of world rally champion Colin McRae, who are racing again in his memory. And coming up in the sport, Portuguese... Well, good evening and welcome to The Seven. Now, the Conservative Party have suspended MP... Chris Pincher, who stood down as the party's deputy chief whip yesterday. This is following allegations he groped two men inappropriately at a London private members club on Wednesday night. Now, in a resignation letter, he said he drank far too much and embarrassed himself and others. Yes, two senior female Conservative MPs, Caroline Noakes and Karen Bradley, joined Labour this afternoon in calling for his suspension from the party and said there should be a new code of conduct for MPs and the party's recent approach to allegations of sexual misconduct posed a risk of serious reputational damage. With the latest from Westminster, here's our correspondent. Much indeed. Now, Scotland has the highest rate of COVID right now in all of the UK and the latest figures show there's been a slight rise. The Office for National Statistics estimates that now one in 18 of us has the virus. That's up from one in 20 last week. Now, that's cases, but the numbers of people seriously affected in hospital remains relatively low. The virologist, Dr Christine tate Burkert thinks the current wave may be levelling off. Good news that those numbers are levelling off, John, isn't it? Seems to be, yeah. yeah. Now, Hong Kong is marking the 25th anniversary of its handover to China. For more than 150 years, it was a British colony. In July 1997, Hong Kong was given back to China under a one country, two systems arrangement, allowing it to keep the freedoms for 50 years. However, China has recently been trying to exert more and more control there, tightening its grip on Hong Kong. Our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, reports. Hong Four months into Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the war is taking its toll. On Monday, this shopping centre was attacked in central eastern Ukraine. G7 leaders said this was a war crime. Then we heard about grain exports stopping. A BBC investigation found evidence Moscow's forces have been moving wheat to Russia. Now, Snake Island, of course, became a symbol of Ukraine resistance. Uh, Russia now says it's removing troops as a gesture of goodwill. But then... Reproductive rights are once again making the headlines. This week at a summit in Edinburgh, Nicola Sturgeon promised legislation to prevent harassment of patients seeking treatment at clinics where abortions are performed. Abortion in Northern Ireland was only decriminalised two years ago and services are still limited. Protests outside those medical facilities are common. Here's our Ireland correspondent now. Hmm. Now doesn't this look beautiful? But island life, as we know it, could be under threat if islanders continue to struggle to get access to housing. Now that's the warning from the Western Isles, where house prices are on the rise, with more and more properties being used as second homes or second holy homes. But there is hope that a new plan for affordable housing might help to reverse ongoing depopulation. A reporter in the Highlands, Ian McInnes, has more details. Tour and the PGA Tour. I think the one thing you can guarantee at the moment is whatever golf event and any golfer, you can guarantee in an interview they'll be asked about live golf. Yeah, it's, yeah. So that, that, it's that's not going away anytime soon. It's not yeah. going away, is it, Sarah? No, no, not, not, not at all. all. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Well, our, it's Friday night and our entertainment reporter is here, David Farrell. David, some big news from the BBC and the World Radio. Yes, yeah, so uh, just announced, uh, not that long ago, BBC Radio 2, but no, in fact, uh, Scott Mills is moving from Radio 1 um, to Radio 2. Now, that's been spent time. Steve Wright apparently going to stay with the BBC uh, to work on a BBC Sound spin-off called Series Jockin', uh, and then the new hosts of the Radio 1 afternoon show are going to be announced on uh, Radio 1 this Tuesday. So it's 
it's, it, that's a big change. That is a, that is a big announcement. Personally, Scott Mills. Personally, I feel like John is a shoe in for the job. I think he's <laughs> I know, working on his CV let's just right start now. That rumor right yeah, now. Yeah. He's, he's, he's on the flight. That'll be in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> John BT. He's off to own. London right now. Yeah, and David, now it's that time of year. Everyone's talking about it. Transmit coming up, yeah. but. It's the first big festival, really, yeah. of the summer. And for Scotland. one act, it's the first festival in a long, long time, time. A long, long time. Paolo Nettini is back. Yeah, so the Friday night, Paolo the Bittersweet is out today. So Paolo will be playing all those new songs at Transmit uh, next weekend. Looking at the rest of the lineup, I know. 2017, he, f he played the first Transmit, and he's been there pretty much been every there, year since. since. Unlike Paolo, though, mm -hmm. Lewis doesn't have anything new to play so <laughs> you'll, sing, you'll sing all the hits that's uh, what people want exactly. though, isn't it? That's and it'll be that walk on as well because yeah, it's gone yeah wonder what it'll play yeah. but you know for, for some acts it will be quite a, a number of years before they've that they, yeah. since they've played a big gig so will there be some of those back to school nerves do we think or absolutely I think so what, what, you know so many are it's funny that you know artists like that say they still get big nerves before playing some of these yeah. gigs, isn't it, David? It's going to be a birthday that weekend, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and just lastly, David, this music is back, gigs are back. Yeah. Transmit is not the only festival of the season; it's right up and down the country. Isn't yeah. It? There's loads. You great, David. Thank right, you. Sarah. You mentioned wellies. <laughs> it's going to happen. Good stuff. Let's now, when in doubt, flat out. Now, for those who remember, that was the signature. Mm -hmm. He was an amazing man. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary talent. Sad. Sad story. Very sad. Now, it's colourful and it's a show, but at its heart, Pride is a protest, and it's now 50 years since that protest began. It took until 1992 for same-sex attraction to be declassified as a mental illness, and since that first event in London, organised by the Gay Liberation Front, Pride has spread to all parts of the UK, with dozens of them across Scotland. Well, joining us seven, is it still a protest, my friend? It is, absolutely. It's about... March, 50 years ago, where there were around 700 protesters, to now, where we see it in all big cosmopolitan cities and in, you know, s smaller smaller places as well. I think there's there's been a lot of changes in, in how... You've got these small communities now, haven't you, in Scotland, like um, Shetland and Arran having pride. And two things, I guess. How important do you think that is, that they host their own? And secondly... What's still to change? I can remember 1972. What's still to change? Yeah, no, it's it's at that point. You know, Pride Scotland was I, the idea was it would come from across Scotland to participate. I think it's just fantastic that people are able to, you know, Aaron had a pride, mm. Gala Shields had a pride down the road from me. It, it, it's amazing that people are able to do that, and it's incredibly powerful to have that in your local area. I mean, in terms of your, your question as to what is left to be changed, I think there's a, a significant problem facing the trans community right now and, and everybody in the LGBT community. Uh, Thank you. And now Gillian's here. Gillian, is it raining? Hello. Is it <laughs> How raining? did you know? <laughs> First of July, it's not feeling all that summery, is no. it? No. It won't no. be a complete washout of the weekend but there's going to be some heavy showers in the mix, as there have been today. We've had uh, some big shower clouds and there'll be a scattering of showers, some of them heavy. That's the forecast. Gillian, thank <laughs> you Best very much for that. Thank you. <laughs> and that is all from us tonight, isn't it, John? This is indeed. Martin Geisler, Laura Goodwin back on Monday at 9 till then. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.